Hello, so today I am at the beautiful Elbe River on my large stone. I like to sit on these stones and do energy work. And it was a bit windy here always by the river, of course. I'd like to make a video about in Old Swedish and in Old Saxon and in Low German languages dialects, the Old, the Low Saxon dialects, we say Nekar. And in Old English, it was Nikor. And in Modern High German, we say Nixa. And this is what we call basically a mermaid, a water spirit. And the water spirit of the Elbe was named Elfa, and later that changed to Elba. And that is what the name was of the river. The river was named after the water spirit that uh, lives inside the river. And she is basically said to be a mermaid in the mythology. Locally here we have stories just from the villages over here we have stories. And uh, we actually have a stone not too far from here, maybe five kilometers on the other side. That's the west side. I live here on the east side. And if you keep going east there, there's a big forest behind there that goes all the way to my farm. Now there is a uh, stone. Some of them were blown up in the 1930s. And they also had hunger stones that were more further down here that were also blowing up in the 20s or 30s, I forget. And uh, But one of the stones remains, and it was one of the Nixestein, the Nixa stones, the mermaid stones where she was normally seen. And I've heard a few different legends here talking to the locals about the... Well, I guess you could... I wouldn't call her a goddess, but the nature spirit of the Elba. And uh, it is, you know, symbolic. They all are different legends that I hear, the different mythology. But in the end, it is the same story, the same idea. So I'm going to explain it a bit. What does water represent always? Water always represents emotions in mythology. In all these mythology myths, people are either lured by the beautiful Nixa to the river, and then they either at the last moment change their minds and go back home and do not become drowned in the river, or the people give in to their emotion of lust and then they hold her hand or follow her into the river and then they drown. Or they are sailors on the river and then they see the beautiful Nixa and then they are not paying attention to where they're sailing and then they would crash on the Nixa stein, the, the, uh, the stones that the Nixa would sit on. So these are basically generalizations of the legends and it is all representing you drowning to your desire of lust. And then in the one legend that I heard where they did not drown, they actually came to their senses and went back to the dance where these Nixon came and lured them to the river. Uh, they went back to the dance hall and uh, everyone told them, oh, those were Nixon and whatever, right? You, you're lucky to be alive. And uh, that is be representing these men were able to control themselves, control their lust, desire, and as a result, they lived and did not die. But uh, in general, it is a representation of your emotions and drowning in your emotion of lust. And how the emotion of lust is, can be dangerous. It can, you know, ruin your life if you do not have a healthy boundary with it. And so that's basically what those representation of these myths about the Elba and her luring men to their deaths is a representation of drowning in your emotions. And her, the name Nixa in all these different languages means to cleanse. People say it means to wash, but it means to cleanse. So what it is a representation of is spiritually cleansing yourself of your emotion of lust. So that is why in the one legend, the young men who are lured by the beautiful woman do not go into the water because they manage to keep their boundaries and uh, take their self-control and overcome their lust for the woman, the Nixa, and they do not end up dying and drowning in the Elba. So in that way they have cleansed themselves 
of their lust that would normally lead them to their death, as we hear in many of the other legends about the Nixa or the Elba. Well, they just thought I'd share this little bit of mythology and my understanding of it, of where I live now in Upper Saxony. I am a low Saxon, but I live in Upper Saxony now. <laughs> and uh, yes, so I thought I would make a short video explaining that. Tschüss.